Hey, hey guys, everybody loves Raymond is better than friends here with another crazy video. You guys love videos and uh, I love making them. I love making videos. So what a wonderful combination. Today, we're talking specifically about these playing cards, the David Blaine first edition Stoics. I know I'm a little bit of a, a late bloomer here. I'm a little bit late, much like my periods but I thought that I'd still provide my opinion on these cards nevertheless, because it's different than what I've seen currently making its way through the internet. And I thought I'd compare it with another deck from another equally famous, less talented magician uh, in this particular bag over here uh, with the, the Chris Angel deck. I thought I'd make a little bit of a comparison here for you guys. So without any further interruptions, let's get into the video oh hey there uh yeah you guys should totally look at the description and check out all the all the things there. if you want to join the card academy i'm sponsored by myself because no one wants to sponsor me so check out the pay k card academy where i'll take you from a beginner to an expert in magic and teach you everything that i know about card magic or you could just buy one of the magic downloads on my website it's not really a download more of a stream Check it out, pigcake.me. Use the code PIGGYSHELL for 20% off. Huh. All right, let's get, let's just get right into it. So the truth of the matter is that everyone's talked about the Stoic playing cards. Everyone's had their own opinion on it. You could see Xavier Spade here and the Gentleman Wake both with hot videos about the uh, Stoic playing cards and its history. So I'm not about to go in depth into that. You could watch those videos that I'm going to link in the description below for that information. By the way, thank you, Gentleman Wake, for giving me these uh, Stoic playing cards. However, this is going to be more of an opinionated video about playing cards and the hype behind them in general. Oh boy, I'm so excited. I can't wait to read all the comments about how my opinion is incorrect. So the Stoic playing cards are David Blaine's attempt at making a deck with the same finish as the Jerry's Nugget playing cards. If you guys are familiar with the rarity of the Jerry's Nugget playing cards, you would also be familiar with uh, apparently the same finish that's on these cards. Of course, I have no reference because I don't own a deck of Jerry's playing cards. So if you have one, you should send it over. My PO box link is in the description below. However, just generally, the feel of the cards is it's all right. I've, I've had better decks. I've had worse decks. Certainly not the worst deck I've ever had. That honor goes to Chris Angel and his wonderful playing cards. I don't know if you guys have ever had the pleasure of going through your local Walmart on your midnight ice cream run and you come across these bad boys, but these go for a pretty penny. These are about uh, $13 retail at Walmart and they look exactly as if they were designed by your local middle school cholo. For those of you guys that don't know what a cholo is, I've provided a picture for reference. Yeah. But you're thinking, hey, that piggy sure loves to talk. Why doesn't he just compare the cards already and get to it? Well, he, here's the comparison. We have the David Blaine Stoics over here to the, uh, to the right, and we have the Chris Angel uh, playing cards to the left. Uh, so these cards both represent two different styles of magic, two different magicians, two different points of view when it comes to presentation of magic. This one is more of your emo cousin that uh, went through a phase, and he is subsequently ruled as the black sheep of the family because he puts on eyeliner, puts on lip liner, puts on uh, eyelashes, and goes to those weird clubs at night. This is more of a representative of the Puerto Rican stoner style of magic, uh, which has been popularized by David Blaine. Uh, very stoic in nature. <laughs> uh, the name of the deck is a stoic, and he's stoic. That's the, the point. But here we have the uh, stoic cards that we're gonna spread, and you notice they spread fairly decently, even though the cards have a little bit of a plastic finish Xavier Spade says a uh, soapy. Uh, you could do whatever moves you want. It's not necessarily uh, going to impede 
the uh, finish of the cards on your actual ability to manipulate them. Now, the Chris Angel cards is a different story altogether because uh, it seems like whatever sort of finish they decided to spray coat on the cards is um, comparable to the urine of a coyote. But as far as the actual cards themselves, they, they, they're clumpy. Uh, they tend to spread in bunches. And uh, when it comes to spreading, you could almost feel the uh, the labor you could feel the, the sweat of the five-year-old that put together this deck of playing cards and you're paying 13 dollars for this chris angel deck however what are you getting what is the benefit of paying 15 dollars for this chris angel deck well you get the the very chris angel inspired joker you're getting the the fairly chris angel inspired uh, ace of spades oh boy and uh, you also get access to over a uh, hundred card tricks on uh, Chris Angel's website where Chris Angel himself is gonna teach you a hundred different card tricks with these particular cards. Now we have the uh, David Blaine cards. What do you get when you purchase a David Blaine deck of stoic playing cards? Well, first of all, you get a box of cards that actually has an interesting property in that it can't be torn. I've tried as I might to tear this, but you can't tear it. So a lot of people have complained about the fit of the actual box itself. I think that's a plus because it's you can't tear it. That's that's cool. That's what we call cool. Then the cards themselves are uh, the star of the show. That's actually a stripper deck. So if you guys are familiar with a stripper deck, I know some of you guys are like, oh, strippers. I, I wish I could finally feel what a woman feels like. Uh, no, no, and, and stop doing cardistry. A stripper deck is a certain deck that's uh, shaved on one side, so when you turn a card over, you could actually uh, pull, the, you could pull the card out. You could pull the card out. I didn't know if it was here, here, but you, you could pull it out, you see that? And also you have a nice little property in that this is a one-way face. So you notice that some of the cards happen to have a bold pip where on the other edge, it's a thin pip. So here we have the, the Shaquille O'Neal pip. And over here we have the Mike Bibby circa 2003 font. Now, one of the complaints that I read about was uh, particular about the finish of the playing cards. People were saying that they were printed in a Taiwan factory by expert playing cards. And people tend to complain and say that the finish of the cards really deters from the actual aesthetic of it because the, the cards look pretty good. They have uh, the David Blaine logo reversed. It looks like a spade. It's very minimal, something Piggy would definitely like. However, when it comes to the actual cards themselves and the way they spread, people say that they spread and they dribble and they don't look good and they don't feel good in the hands. I disagree, especially if you come from playing with other cards. Say you want to have the spectator pick a card, in this case, the, uh, the Jack of Hearts, and you want to lose this card into the middle of the deck and you say, wow, look, I'm going to make your card uh, go somewhere. Here we go. Here's a magic move. And now it's actually gone from the deck. But where, where did it go? You think it, you think Jabrizi took it? Well, he did because there's your card. The jack of... <laughs> so you could do whatever slights you want with it. It's a very easy to work with deck. You could do cardistry with it if you so wish and definitely want to alienate any uh, member of the opposite gender. Bonus trick, bonus trick. PewDiePie took out bonus meme, but luckily for you, your boy Piggy has bonus tricks. So this is a trick you could do with any set of stripper decks. You could do this with any stripper deck you want. As a matter of fact, you could win a stripper deck if you uh, happen to uh, join the contest in the description below. Just do all the things that it says there and you could win a, a stripper deck. Oh boy, I'm so excited. But for this trick, you have uh, the spectator pick any card they want, or if you want, you could tell them to, to think of one and to take it out of the deck. And of course, the spectator looks at the card and you tell them to imprint it in their mind, much like uh, Jacob does in Twilight. So imprint this card into your mind, sir, and remember exactly what it looks like. Of course, this card goes back into the middle of the deck, shuffled. If you're feeling brave, you could even have the spectator shuffle the deck. But alas, I did a little bit of cardistry and there's no spectators anywhere near me. But you inform the spectator upon taking the deck back. If it would be impressive, if you could go through the deck and uh, find their card. And of course, the spectator is going to say yes, of which case you go, do me a favor, hold out your hand. I don't even want to touch the cards. I don't want to touch the cards. Uh, think of your cards, say it over and over in your head. Oh, yes. Four of hearts. 
It's the four of hearts. And of course you're right. Of course you're right. Because uh, you peeked at the card. Oh yeah. I'm so excited to show you this little bit of a peek. So this is a little bit of an offbeat peek you could do with a stripper deck. Now, usually uh, when it comes to the actual stripping of the deck, it really depends on uh, how shallow and how the deck was shaved in order for you to be able to do this. But uh, the Stoics I found have a very, very pronounced uh, shaving. So it's gonna be fairly easy to do this particular peak. So you have the spectator pick any card. As they're looking at the card, you are revolving the deck end for end. Of course you do this with two hands. I'm doing this with one hand because I have to hold this thing. So when you return the spectator's card into the deck, of course, the good thing about this particular move is that it takes place on the offbeat. So you insert the card into the deck. Uh, you could shuffle the deck if you want. You can have the spectator shuffle the deck if you've seen that they've mixed cards in a way that is one way. So if they mix cards in a Hindu shuffle, if they mix cards like this, if they mix cards like this, I've seen people do that. If they start messing up with the cards or if they've done that throughout the series of tricks that I'm assuming you've done, don't take them to shuffle the deck or don't have them shuffle the deck. That's even better. So for this particular peak, you're actually gonna pull the card out slightly as you bevel the deck towards the spectator. So you're gonna aim this front edge of the spectator. You're gonna pull the card out. Right now it's out. And this action is covered by your right hand. So you notice that this spectator doesn't see much and uh, as does this spectator because this hand is covering it. Now, of course, in this action, guess what I'm seeing? I'm seeing the card, boy. So in this case, I'm getting a peek at the card that's inside of the middle of the deck. It's covered because I'm aiming the deck at the spectator. And now upon asking the spectator to put their hands, uh, to put their hands out, all I have to do is use my pinky to square up the card into the deck as that goes in their hand. So what's gonna happen here is that you are actually gonna bring your fingers down. You're gonna bring your fingers slightly down, which is gonna cause that card to protrude at the edge here. And you notice that you could see the pip here of the card enough for you to get a reading and to know what the card is in uh, this natural action of you just holding the deck you could get your peak that way now of course when you're starting off you want to get one of these exaggerated memes uh, it's still covered by the hand you're gonna have to watch your angles a little bit more but uh, it's still well covered peak because this hand covers the dirty work so once again you're putting uh, pressure with the left hand using your thumb and middle finger to bring that card down slightly so that as you're holding the deck all you have to do is gesture in this open fashion and guess what you're getting your peak here. So now when you return the deck to the spectator's hand, you're just gonna square up the action with your pinky, put it in their hand, and uh, there's no sort of evidence that you have peeked at anything. To them, the card went clean in the middle of the deck. There's no sort of gap, no sort of break, and you still manage to peek at the card using a very, very sneaky way. So uh, this is a very strong move to do with a uh, stripper deck, so don't dismiss it just because of its uh, simplicity. And uh, I hope you guys do it. I hope you guys perform it. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Ah. Well, uh, I'm gonna go figure out different ways to use a uh, squeegee, uh, a scrunchie as a squeegee. Again, when I see you 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 again. When I see you again, when I see you again.